<laughs> Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back. I'm Jennifer from Joy of Stationery and it has been a little bit of a while. I had an unexpected hiatus but hopefully I'm back and we'll be able to share a little bit more about what's been going on with my planners and journals and notebooks. So I wanted this to be a bit of an update and to talk a little bit about what I'm currently using and what's been helping me, especially when things got into a little bit of a rut. Something that I think that I've found is that there are sort of two stages of being in love with my planners and notebooks and journals. And the first stage is when they're new and it's full of potential and there's something about being able to get acquainted with a new notebook that's just so thrilling. And that I think is something that really ends up happening at the beginning of the year as January begins. The second stage when I sort of fall in love again with my planners and techos and journals and notebooks is when I start to see the ways that I've really grown to love them and to use them and they're looking well loved. And I find that maybe the first few months of the year between January when many of us begin our planners with the first day of the calendar year between then and now as we approach May are some of these early intermediary months where those planners and journals and notebooks are no longer new and have that kind of exciting novelty to them, but they've not yet been used and loved enough to the point where I feel really close to and attached to them precisely because I can see all the ways that I've been using them and loving them. And I think that that's something that I really started paying attention to this year. And, you know, as I was kind of thinking back on the last few months, what it was that got me in a little bit of a rut. And maybe it's just that that kind of early period is kind of a tough time as you bridge the kind of novelty of the new page of the new book. And later it's well usedness or well lovedness and i think i finally reached that second stage where i am looking back at the books that i'm using that i've been consistent with and falling in love with them again so i wanted to go over a little bit about how what that has been looking like as well as some other little things that have helped me along the way so i want to start with the one that i've been reaching for every day and has been so far my most kind of successful consistent <laughs> book and that is this setup right here so it's in the blue traveler's notebook standard size that i have customized from baumkuchen through their truly yours service some years ago and inside this is where i house my hobonichi weeks let me just show you here. I got the really lovely and quirky charm from the new Tokyo edition for the Traveler's Notebook that just came out and I was really surprised. I had pre-ordered the charm and the charms ended up coming early. So I have that. Um, I had ordered some of the other accessories as well. Those haven't come in yet because I ordered those from a different shop but I was super excited when this came in and I just had to put the Taiyaki one on my main traveler's notebook because it was just so just so perfect. I, I love this so much. And I still have my cute espresso bean or coffee bean charm and I've decided to put that on the side here so I can have both of these charms here with me. So let me just take you through what this is looking like inside here. Oops. Um, so I have the clear insert, clear zippered um, insert first, and it's serving as a little bit of a dashboard. I've been changing it up a little bit, changing out some of the stickers and some of the background, but I have a little postcard here. So I really liked having a kind of dashboard in front, and it's just... It's actually helped a lot and 
this has been why I've decided to kind of switch things around and have my Hobonichi wigs here um, tucked into the front rather than the back of the insert. So I have my beautiful Tiny Dragons wigs and I have been so happy with how consistent I have been with this. And I think just really learning to love the Hobonichi wigs and to figure out the ways that work best for me in terms of planning in it and occasionally journaling in it as well. So as you can see here, I've just kind of slipped it um, in as such. And I've shown this, I think, before, but I just wanted to give another, you know, glance at how it's going. Things have changed a little bit in terms of just the kind of way that I've set things up. You can see that I was really consistent with this particular kinds of layout, and then I started switching things around just a little bit on the right-hand side in terms of breaking up information depending on what I felt like I needed it for. And then I changed it over to a kind of checklist as I kept track of symptoms. And this was working really well for me for a while, as you can see here. And I think what was so just lovely about this, I, I changed the left-hand side kind of set up here between this week and then this week, but it has just been so lovely to kind of flip back over this and really see the ways that I've been using this as a life book. So this really was, or is rather, an everyday carry type of planner for me. And I have been letting myself be a little bit freer about trying out different layouts, both on the right-hand side and the left-hand side, depending on what I feel like I need to do for the information I need to keep track of that week. And so you can see that, you know, I've changed things up here and there from page to page sometimes. But I think just being able to kind of maintain consistency and even if I'm changing the pen has made it just so that I have really fallen in love with this book now and, you know, continuing on with it. Playing around with random stickers that I got as well as different kinds of deco, sometimes not using deco at all, but overall it's just been such a wonderful and successful experiment in consistency for me and but also the kind of consistency where I don't have to be married to whatever setup or spread that I've created. I try to be consistent with the things that are working for me and then if I feel like I want to try some other things I've kind of given myself the freedom to do that and I think that's actually made all the difference so I've been really really loving this for um for the Hobonichi weeks and just really happy that I'm feeling less intimidated by the Hobonichi weeks I feel like last year I was trying out different things and I found a rhythm in different ways by using different Hobonichi weeks for different purposes but for an everyday carry sort of all-in-one planner that was something that I was still trying, you know, grappling with how best to kind of use it. And I'm just really, really happy to get, have, you know, be at a point where I can look back and just think like, oh my gosh, this really is becoming a life book for me where I can look back on the year and so much of it is contained here. So even if I'm using the occasional other planner or techo or another journal, I at least know that pretty much, you know, everything, maybe not certain kinds of details, but, you know, everything for the most part is in here, and I've, I've really loved being able to, to do that. And I actually, kind of moving forward, starting in May, have been thinking about trying out a new layout, and um, this is for reasons that I'll maybe get into in a future um, video, 
but you know, uh, I had fun starting to kind of set that up and we'll see kind of how that goes. And I love that the Hobonichi weeks and the way that the pages are laid out really invite so much experimentation with that. So I'm really happy about that. Moving on to the notes pages, I had used it a little bit as a kind of um, media journal in a way. And then it, I got to a point where I was kind of craving having a bit of a journaling space um, in the back here as well. So part of this had to do with what became kind of a renewed interest in what it might feel like to kind of experiment with one book systems. So one book in the sense of having both my planning needs and my journaling needs met to some extent. And it doesn't have to be the be all end all, but just having a book where I can have both of those things for the most part. And if I need kind of extra journaling space and extra journals, or perhaps some extra kind of techo space for more detailed planning needs, that would be okay. But what would it look like? What would it feel like to be able to do the planning and journaling in one book? So I started to try to use the notes page in that way, in, in some ways. So it really kind of started with this here in March. This was more of kind of a keeping track of some um, writing tracking. And then I started to do some daily journaling or, you know, even if it's not every day, it was almost every day by using these lovely little images and decorations from Eric Small Things on the daily tearaway calendar for each day and using that and my date stamp to kind of mark the different days. And I really started loving how this turned out. And you can see I was doing a lot more sort of journaling. Some of these um, entries are quite long. And here's another kind of writing entry. But I kept up with it. And then even when it got to the point where the entries were shorter, I still really love how this looked out, uh, how this worked out and how this ended up looking. And it was also so easy to kind of look back and really quickly see what the day's entries were because I was using that one image from the daily calendar, Eric Small Things, and the date stamp and kind of dividing up the page in that way. So you can see, again, some really short entries. These are really just kind of keeping track of some scores from a game that I really love. But I loved that I was able to kind of use this back here to play around with that a little bit more. So that's what this experiment has been. I have stickers in a craft folder insert at the back here. And I have loved this as a kind of everyday carry and potential one book experiment precisely because it is combining tra the Traveler's Notebook with the Hobonichi Weeks and not making me have to decide between one or the other. And I just, I love that I've, I love that I've fallen in love with this, <laughs> basically, is, is what I want to say. And I'm just so delighted that it's been such a consistent experiment for me. And I am excited to actually have a Hobonichi Weeks that I can really kind of call my life book and have almost everything in by the end of the year. So hopefully that'll continue to, to work out here. I wanted to show the other notebooks that I am currently kind of working in, sometimes a little bit more on a daily basis and other times less often. But one of the things that I kind of wanted to share also as part of this is how I ended up kind of getting out of a particular kind of rut. So 
I think that because of that interim period I was talking about between the first of the year where everything is new and months later in the year when things have become much more well-loved, you develop your routines, you develop your systems and your rhythms. What ended up helping during those months when it was still kind of in that awkward in-between stage is doing a little bit of DIY. And I think what that helped me to feel is a little bit more of feeling like, oh yes, like this is my techo, this is my book, and here are things that I am creating to show that I love it, to make it mine, and to kind of personalize it. So I'll show two, or I guess like a few examples here, which will also give a little bit of a heads up about the other occasional notebooks that have been in circulation for me. So this is my Passport Traveler's Notebook in the camel leather that I had gotten as a gift over Christmas. I have actually here, this is a, um, a pin <laughs> that I'm using. It's these really cute little cat pins. This one is one that my partner ended up picking um, out and it, it says everything sucks because I think these are, I think these are pins that are called catitude pins, but it was just very silly and kind of fun. And I thought the, that the cat looked really kind of cute and funny on it. So I've been using it actually as a charm for this. Um, inside here, uh, I won't show you the first thing just yet. I just wanted to show you the inserts first. Um, I have the two inserts that cover the year, um, but these are the weekly inserts for 2024. And this was kind of an experiment that I was doing. I hadn't used these weekly inserts for the passport before and I started out kind of logging what we've been eating or meals that we've been making and then later on more recently have been using it to kind of try it out as a kind of techo space so a little bit more in terms of kind of planning along with meals and so it's been sort of stop and go as you can kind of see here there are some empty spots or you know kind of trying to paste in some things but this is actually another kind of mini experiment that I was using as you know what would it look like to have kind of a one book experiment going on in the passport size just because I love the passport size so much so that's something that I was thinking of continuing in here and I've just got some you know different lovely stickers in the Traveler's Town folder. This is the clear zippered insert and this is the Field Notes kind of 2024 calendar that I keep in here just for a quick at a glance of where we are in the year. And then for the most exciting part, or all of this is really exciting, <laughs> but the part that I wanted to share is uh, one of my first DIY kind of projects. And so, I am someone who really loves cross stitch and decided to try that out and let me sort of show you what I kind of created. So this is a kind of cross stitch and felt folder that I tried to make, <laughs> folder insert that I made for the passport size. And this was actually from a kit that I had gotten to create a needle holder, but I used the materials to instead make it into the shape of a kind of, you know, fabric folder. And it was an experiment. I, you know, wasn't used to doing the stitching around the edges, so it came out, you know, a little bit, <laughs> a little bit janky, but, you know, uh, wabi-sabi, right? Kind of the embracing the the imperfection of it. And I actually really love how it turned out. And I'm thinking of just trying my hand at making some more of these. I think I, you know, it was just that I, I love um, 
I love fabric and I love kind of the feel of cross stitch or just and just kind of the look of it and this was such a beautiful beautiful design that I wanted to see how I might be able to kind of make a little something make a little folder insert for the passport traveler's notebook size and maybe eventually I'll try kind of making a little wallet insert and I just I thought it might be kind of fun um, to try to do this with you know fabric uh, I know that there are some really nice leather wallet inserts out there but uh, but I was I don't know I guess I was just really feeling a kind of fabric one so I am actually really pleased with how it turned out again embracing the wabi-sabi of it embracing the imperfection of it but it's been such a nice little touch to my passport set up here that actually makes me want to use it more <laughs> and it's tough because you know I already have my everyday carry set up with the Hobonichi Weeks and the standard traveler's notebook but I just you know it as of now it, it kind of still peeks out, out over the edge but that's okay I, I kind of like it <laughs> and I just I love how it looks I just I love it um so hopefully I'll figure out you know how to kind of make more of these and, and perfect it a little bit more but uh just knowing that this is a, a little thing that that you know we can do to kind of personalize things for ourselves has has just made a lot of made all the difference really so that is that story with my passport traveler's notebook oops i forgot to put that in <laughs> And so next, you can see that I did a little bit more DIY. This is the most recent one. I had actually had this um, lovely crochet bit, which was actually crocheted for me by Sydney. Um, and I will, um, I believe that she has a channel, so I'll, I'll link her below for um, a little while ago. And I had tried it on a deconstructed horn that I had kind of taken apart to try DIYing some stuff. And then most recently, I decided to kind of transfer that over and use this on. I don't know if you can tell <laughs> what this is yet, but on my voice term. This is my pocket voice term. And this is actually a pocket voice term that I had started back last August and started kind of um, as my little. <laughs> little bookmark that, that I think I did my five little desk joys showing showing this but I just thought it was so pretty uh, but this is a journal that I had started back when and it was you know kind of trying out these really pretty stickers along with it and I started doing some journaling in the at the end of the year and then I put this aside for a while and now I've actually come back to it and this is with my big uh, thick nibbed <laughs> fountain pen that I got but started to just do a little bit more kind of daily journaling in here as kind of like a anytime journal and I've actually really really been liking this and it was just such a great way to I think just keep an every everyday journal and to remember that I had this pocket loge term lying around and then to do something more with it to kind of again make it make it mine in a way I may you know I'm, I'm debating whether to take this sticker off and kind of glue this kind of on here and then do a little bit more on the, the front here or I might just leave it like this so that I can kind of have the best of both worlds where I can still see the cover of the loge term itself but also have this as kind of an extra cover on top I might even want to put a little bit of a cross stitch type thing in the front here as well but it's just been really lovely to have this and i can still use the rubber band closure the elastic closure just over the <laughs> the crocheted bit and just kind of have this as a super cozy cozy journal that that i keep around and because this is so small, it's a pocket size. I love how portable this is and, you know, can just bring it with me to like the cafe or something and do a little bit of, uh, of journaling there. 
So next what I have is uh, an A6 Midori notebook and I'd not actually used these before and I'm really, really loving it. So you can see that I've decorated the front a little bit and I wanted this to kind of keep track of my writing sessions. There's not a whole lot in it so far, but I did want to kind of just kind of show you how I decorated the front and also use the clear Midori cover. And I, I really love this. So I actually had um, ended up also getting another one and that's what's in here. Um, this one I haven't actually decorated just yet, but I'd, I'd been using this as a kind of um, series of notes, maybe longer journal reflections, things like that, but that's what's housed in here. And so I just wanted to show you once again, here is an A6 setup that's actually quite recent. Um, I just hadn't been in an A6 in a little while. Or, you know, again, this was something that I was trying to kind of recultivate. And I loved putting this together, actually. So this is the highway cover. And I wanted to personalize it a little bit. And I felt like this really cute secret book club sticker by Eureka Art Studio fit so perfectly somehow with like the, the color scheme here. I thought it was a really nice accent piece. And then I just have a clear cover on cover on top. And it's just been, again, a really fun way to enclose. Oops, hi, it's my cat. <laughs> hello, hello. Enclose. <laughs> Uh, an A6 setup here. So this might be something for a later video, but just to kind of quickly show you. So these are kind of the three sizes that I'm experimenting with in terms of one book systems. This might not be super surprising given that I think my very first video on this channel, very first actual video on this channel was my One Book July setup last year, which was in an A6. And I was using a colors cover that I ended up decorating with some patches and kind of personalizing it and making it my own. And that really made the difference for just wanting to be in such a, a lovely little kind of one book setup, if you will. So I think that's where this is coming from as well. Just, you know, having a um, even just a colors cover that I could kind of decorate. Granted, the sticker isn't stuck on there. It's just held in place right now with a bit with a bit of washi tape but I just really love the color combination. And um, again, there's room for a little bit more personalization and customization there. I also, I'm not sure if you can kind of see this, but the A6 notebooks from Midori also come with a bookmark. And I had attached this cute little gem that I had gotten with my sibling a long time ago and I found it. Oh my gosh, it's it's been so long and I was so happy to find it that I wanted to use it as a charm. And so uh, I kind of tied it to the end of this bookmark here. And I love how it kind of just, I don't know, it goes well with the brown and the gray somehow. So yeah. So that's just a hopefully not too long <laughs> or too rambly of an update with just some things that have been on my mind, like the one book experiments, and I might do kind of a separate video on that, but also just kind of what has been helping with personalizing things, getting a little bit crafty and trying to be creative and DIY with some things just to kind of make me feel that connection a little bit more with my books. And it worked, it, or it has been working a lot. And it it's really lovely to feel like now, as we're finally approaching May, since it's now been you know a good four months of the year, which is just really kind of incredible to, to even think that, that four months have already passed in, in 2024. But it's been really lovely to start embracing that stage of working with books where I fall in love with them again, just because I'm seeing the ways that I love them, the ways that I like to hold them and kind of work in them and, and how they are serving as these records of my life and my thoughts. And so that's something that 
hopefully will kind of frame the next few months of the year and that will help me to kind of recultivate a kind of consistency with my books. So yeah, so this is just my little welcome back video <laughs> for now and hopefully I will have some more coming soon and that there will be a little bit more consistency on that front as well. I hope that you all are hanging in there, finding ways to nourish your souls, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.